For game hunters in the Midwest, winter months can be long, dark, and hard, and game hunting can seem impossible. But for gaming off the grid, these long, grueling, treacherous months, well, they've been prosperous. All the naysayers be damned. This game hunting episode is full of dingers, and the winter months haven't slowed us down one damn bit. Rick here and you are watching the 57th best game hunting channel gaming off the grid I've always had this preconceived notion about pawn shops, really no data to support it. I just always figured things were overpriced at pawn shops, but this chain of pawn shops in our area, easy pawn, I walk in and I find a bunch of GameCube games. Now, none of these are really dingers, but just finding GameCube games in the wild is pretty impressive. And now easy pawn is on our normal stop when we hit thrift stores and stuff like that. So if you have an easy pawn in your area, you might want to check it out because the games are like two, three bucks. It's pretty awesome. All right, guys, just leaving this pawn shop. I got a stack of GameCube games here. I got SpongeBob Bikini Bottom, Scooby-Doo Unmasked, Shrek 2, Curious George, Sonic Mega Collection for 16 bucks. I got a little footage in there, but it's so small in there and really hard to film without looking like an idiot. So um, this is going to be a really good turn. These three here are worth quite a bit. So uh, we'll see what we can do, uh, but I think it's going to be a good pick. waiting in line here they take everything up front they won't let you hold it but I'll show you um, after I get everything major haul GameCube PS2 yeah VCR pretty awesome and you remember this show I'm gonna get season one and two and Alf as a gift to myself for all the stuff that I found today pretty excited this major haul here so we spent 95 bucks um, on everything you see here today uh, this VCR with remote and manual 75 on the low end some have been going north of 100 so we'll say 75 this we got for 9.99 these are going for like 30 CIB um, Pikmin on the GameCube it's a heavy hitter I'm gonna go low but this will probably at least get 40 we'll at least get 10 here get 20 say 20 there probably 8 to 10 there. This looks like it's going for like 30-ish. Um, get 15 out of that. Get 10 or so out of that. 10 to 15 out of that. 10 out of that. Um, these three, I don't really know. Um, they were all just like $3.99, I believe. Yep. So I just figured, what the heck, let's go for it. We 
at Wii Sports. We got Mario Party, Mario 64, and Monster Hunter on the DS. Mario Party 4, I don't know if you can see it, there's $3.99 over there. Mario Super Sluggers, I don't know about that Avengers game. Operation Raccoon City, I'm gonna grab that. Some Wii U games. I'm definitely gonna get the All-Star Racing. You guys, really good haul here. Their pricing's a little high here, but uh, 53, well, with tax, 57, 68. I got uh, Mario Party 4 for the GameCube. Uh, which is like without the manual, but it's in pretty good shape. I got to clean the case up a little bit, but this is like a 60 to $70 game. I got the Sonic uh, Racing for the Wii U. It's about a $10 game. Mario Sluggers for the Wii. Uh, it goes for like 10. Wii Sports. Uh, this goes for uh, still about 15 to 20. Uh, we got Mario Party, about a $15 3DS game. I'm dropping stuff here. Uh, Monster Hunter, it's about a $20 game, and Mario 64 on the DS Complete, which is about a $20 game. And then I got these two games to add to the collection. So most of you guys know the GameCube market is super hot right now, and we wanted to keep some of these games, but man, that margin is insane. So if we flip it, we can buy games that we want to get. And finding GameCube games in the wild is insane and finding dingers on top of that it was like man what is happening so we're gonna have a video come out in a couple weeks probably about should you buy a gamecube in 2021 and we'll dive deeper into that topic then but nonetheless finding gamecube games in the wild it's always fun where do i even begin with this next pickup sometimes we surprise ourselves you know i see a ton of guitar hero rock band stuff and the stuff is a pain in the ass to ship but there is some margin there because it's kind of becoming a nostalgic thing for people but when i seen a red variant that i've never seen before i was like okay this could be something and turns out it's, it's probably going to be hard to beat this pickup for the rest of the year all right guys here's salvation army i don't know if i believe this there's no way to test this it's cleaned up a little bit but this red drum set looks like it's going for like 200 plus. It's got the sticks. I don't know if these are, they are the actual drum sticks, which helps the mic. From what I'm reading, this is a Target exclusive. So it's a rare variant. Um, we have 10 bucks on it. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that up. It'll be a pain in the nuts to ship, but if we can get that out of it, holy shit. So the days following the rock band drum set pickup, I could not shake the thoughts of Where's the game? Where's the guitar? I had already listed the drum set, but I'm like, man, the thing was so minty. Where are the other pieces to this set? Now, I never found the game, and I kept going to the same Salvation Army. I think it was three or four days in a row. And finally, in the good old toy section. Yeah. Hey guys, here at the Salvation Army, and uh, this is where I got the drum set the other day. And I've been coming back every day because I was wondering if this guitar was here. Well, it's here and it's out. Target exclusive for Xbox One, $3.99. I wish I would have had this when I listed the drums. The drums already sold for like $2.63. Um, we're gonna get this and get this listed. So we'll have $13.99 in the whole thing. Pretty crazy. All right, guys, leaving Salvation Army here. Four bucks, I always round up. The red Target exclusive rock band guitar. I looked this up while I was in there. It looks like it's going for about $120 to $150, sometimes like $175. I already sold the drums that I got for 10 bucks for 263. <laughs> this is just silly, but I'm excited. Yeah.
sundown sealed can't find a good uh, price on it but i think 10 to 15 but this freaking pro call Herman. i don't even know who the hell he is Harmon. it's 249 looks like it's going for like 30 bucks so probably at least get 24.99 out of that real quick we're gonna keep on looking i found a blue ray 249 invasion 5 invasion of the body snatchers and it's got the slip cover looks like it's going for like 38 bucks so i guess we'll get at least 30 on a quick buy it now it's hot 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 here today we're gonna keep looking yeah it's another pro call harm i don't know who he is it looks like it's going for 15 so i'm gonna pair those two up 249 man this is a freaking good trip here about another 15 to 20 dollar one here the crawling eye dvd so recap what we're picking up here bad camera work and all that's what we're gonna go with guys it's gonna be a good haul Man, there's so much money to be made with DVDs, and it's kind of intimidating when you walk into a store and see shelves of DVDs, but you have to know what you're looking for. We're kind of throwing around the idea of starting a Patreon, and we give you that information like in a spreadsheet. So let us know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in. But DVDs, guys, they are a hot commodity. We got Britney Spears Crossroads Special Collection, Collector's Edition. It's $2.99, rounded up, donated a penny. Uh, this goes for like $14 to $16 range. We'll see what we can get out of it. Oh, Brittany. God, it's back before she was all plastic surgery up. God, she used to be a babe. Second one of these we have found in a couple weeks. <laughs> So a lot of times we hear like, how do you know what DVDs to look for? And the Britney Spears DVDs are a great example of like, do you think people are getting nostalgic for this stuff? And I, I would say Britney Spears is kind of far enough removed from being a superstar. Kids that were maybe young or in their teenage years when she was popping are now like, I want to see Crossroads. So that's kind of one of the things that goes through our minds when we're looking at DVDs is like, are people nostalgic for this yet? The, the, maybe a little bit of a tip? Something? All right, guys, here's the stacks here. Let me get this Just Dance Kids. I'm, I'm going to give this my car shot. I'm going to stop and see if I can get it left. But then over here, this is like a 30 some dollar set. It's brand new. Push is 40 if it's sealed, and it is, we'll see. It is 9.99, if I get 40 out of it, it's pretty good. And then these, combined, I think we'll get 25 out of They're 5 dollars a piece. So, not a great turn, but I'm gonna keep looking here, but so far we got a pretty good stack going. All right, guys, we're gonna there for 58. I did get them to take 15% uh, off that Mario Kart that had the scratch on it, so we're gonna get it buffed and see. Loose math, I think we should easily be able to turn this into 150. Um, a couple things go our way, maybe a little higher, but uh, pretty good haul for the first stop of the day. Are you guys ready to hit some Goodwill dump bins? We are. Let's go. Ooh. Here you fit. Nice. Oh, what day is it? I don't know. Friday. Right.
All right, guys, this is how we do the Goodwill dumb bins. Get a cart of shit, then we just look it all up. So that's a lot of stuff. Most of it's probably garbage. All right, guys, so we looked everything up. This is what the car looks like now. It took some time, but we weeded through all the garbage. A lot less stuff, but some of the stuff's a dinger. We'll make another pass. They put some new stuff out, so we won't find anything on the quick. So they'll complete a couple of these T10s. They'll go for eight to ten bucks a piece. Uh, a couple big finds. This looks like it's going for like forty to like sixty dollars. I have to go through it and make sure it's complete. Uh, this book's about ten. I guess it's an HS collection. This DVD's going for like twelve. Got a Phillips Magnum with a lot of VCR. There's one for like forty. This little dude seems to be going for like fifteen. This DVD's going for like eight to ten. We need to go for like a level, so I think we're going to try flipping from today. Life, life is, is just always mysterious and surprising. You never know what's around the next corner. I'm going to give this guy a go here. It's $5.99. I'm seeing them on eBay selling for like 25 to 35 bucks new. I wish this one worked. It needs new batteries, but uh, we're going to give it a go. So part of my French, but a fucking stuffed frog? That's ridiculous. And guys, we've talked about VCRs at nauseum. It's just a hot commodity. It's insane. In 2021, VCRs, VCR combos, they sell for so much. So here's some more VCRs. Good price on this. I uh, don't really love the brand Emerson. It looks like this is going for like 35 bucks. It's like a mini VCR. I've never really seen one like this. But, uh, hopefully it works. Emerson DA4. $3.99. Let's see what we can do with this one. That's the expensive one. It's like a twenty-four to twenty-six dollar name. They've got the other one, uh, Volume Three Redemption, down here. I think that one goes for a little bit less. These are usually have reasonable prices here, so I think I'm gonna snag them both. Here's the type of DVDs you have to look for. Frankenhooker. It's like a nineteen to twenty-four dollar DVD. It's two forty-nine. I uh, don't see much else here, but uh, <laughs> I mean, we're definitely gonna watch this. Um, but these are the type of movies, the obscure stuff um, that you gotta look for. The Blu-ray of it's even more expensive. It looks like 30 bucks. But I think we're gonna call it there. Go get those dot hat games from the front and uh, go have some fun with uh, a Franken hooker. I'll get those two dot hat games with uh, volume two being 20 some bucks. One or 20 dollars you can get. I think we can get 10 or 15 out of the other one. And the total is 11.20. It's almost a wrap on this, what is it, fifth hunting episode. And guys, we talk about it all the time. We've talked about it in all of our hunting episodes, but persistence, persistence, persistence. This Salvation Army that I'm about ready to go into and find a major pickup, I never find video games in, and I definitely never find consoles in this Salvation Army. But on this lucky, glorious day, a fat PS2. Just stick with it and keep grinding and you will find retro gaming pickups. All right guys, just came over to the DVD section here. I found Star Wars Episode 3 and I never find video games here. PS2, and then I come over to the electronics. 
fat PS2 here with the network adapter. Looks like some sort of wireless controller adapter, the hookups, and a memory card. No controller. Looks like it needs cleaned up. Um, it's $6.99. This is definitely worth taking a shot on. We've got to clean it up, but uh, you never know. This could be. <laughs> It might not work, it's sold as is, so, uh, but I think it's worth the risk. So we got $3.99 on this, which goes for like $9 or $10. And we got a $6.99 PS2 Fat. Let's see how this thing goes. All right, guys, ended up getting that game for half price. $1.99, $6.99 for the console. Even if we have to sell the console for parts, we're going to make out pretty good here. But, man, I just never see video games or PS or consoles in here. So, pretty excited about this, man. Boy, $6.99 PS2 Fat. This could be a really good pick. What's this, the fifth, fifth number hunting five. video? We still don't really know what we're doing. We still kind of suck at getting footage. Yes. But the fifth Gaji hunting video in the bag. An awesome, is this a beer? Two beers? This is a weird An beer hybrid. sandwich. Yeah, so uh, we have the peanut butter party and anniversary jam from Confluence. Yes, they were celebrating their eighth anniversary, so they made these two beers. And what's cool is they made these two beers, and they're made to be poured together. Yeah, so it goes two-thirds jam. Jam. And then one-third peanut, peanut butter. Peanut butter over a over spoon? Over a spoon, yes. To have this to have a peanut butter and jelly amazing concoction oh man it's so crazy to think that they brewed two different batches of beer yeah and planning to do this and then it turned out like, like this is this tastes so good i wish we had enough to be able to review them each on their own right but yes. we're reviewing them together combined and it really does taste like a peanut butter and jelly jam sandwich it's yeah it's dangerous it's uh the peanut butter taste is really good the aroma the nose of this beer yeah is very good it's just like kind of takes me back to my childhood <laughs> which is weird because i didn't drink beer when i was a kid well, well uh, allegedly, allegedly. yeah <laughs> but i i just like kudos to confluence to releasing something super fun that is unique. For their anniversary. That, like yes, that. yeah, that you have to do, like, to pour it differently like that. Like, this is unique because, you know, we've done, what, 350, 400 beers together on the channel, and we've never had to do a beer. We have to pour form. over yeah. the spoon. And so it, it, was, it was fun. It was fun getting footage. It's just fun having to enjoy it in this way. So happy 8th anniversary, Confluence. We and are thank you. super late to the party, though. Yeah. So. yeah, we've had this for a couple months. Yes. And just been trying to find that right episode to do this. But anyways, 5th hunting episode. 5th hunting episode. So if you guys have seen our other ones, you know how they go. Yeah. So at the end of the episodes, there's updates. Yeah. Obviously, because sometimes things haven't sold well, yet. Yeah, so, I, I think it's we, we we've been trying to make our hunting episodes like we try cutting out all the filler and making them all killer. So oh, it's all yeah. about what sells. But you know sometimes you pick up something that sells, but like the other stuff in the footage doesn't sell in yeah. time for that video to come out. So then we have to do updates. So we have four updates. Here are the updates. Also tonight an update. All right, let's start with The Witcher 2, which is a 360 game, twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, which is kind of surprising because Witcher 3 is the game that everybody is like, oh my God, if you have a PS4 or Xbox One, you got to play The Witcher 3. <laughs> but The Witcher 2 picked it up on the cheap yeah. at the consignment shop, twenty four ninety nine. That's what it sold crazy. for. And let's talk about VCRs. We talk about them at nauseum. Yeah. And this wasn't even a brand that's like... A good brand. It's like uh, Daewoo. It's like kind of like uh, hit Dude, and miss. I've always felt that way. I'm glad you mentioned that. Like when I've ever found TVs, even back in the day, hey, like, when I seen Daewoo, I'm like Daewoo, Day who? Day shit. I don't know, but this thing actually worked really well. So whoever bought this Daewoo VCR combo. I think they were getting into something really good because to me, it felt as structurally sound as the Magnavox combos Ooh, we've nice. sold, yeah. you know, and those sold for, you know, 80 to a hundred dollars plus $49.99 for a good old Daewoo. And then we had that pickup 
the same one that we had The Witcher 2 yes. in, and Tenchu on the PS2, which is a game we don't have, but we weren't inclined to keep it. We just try keeping games we want to play, yes. try keeping our collection all killer, no filler, so Tenchu had to go. And then we were at that garage sale together, which was a, a, a great day, dude. That, no, was, that was so a, much fun. It, Looking back on it, nice. like, okay, yeah, it, it was so much fun. But we found that Atari from that old gal who's like, oh, my demo game's inside, whatever. But we got that Star Wars glass and that Dr. Pepper glass, which the Star Wars glass still hasn't sold. Update maybe coming on that one. Yes, but, but this Joni... Happy Days Happy Glass. Happy Days Glass sold for fourteen ninety nine, and I love those retro go, style glasses. Yeah, I'd have to go back and watch the footage, but like fifty cents for a buck. Yeah, it was like super cheap. But all what's cool about the updates, it's all going to the bottom line. Yeah, because we already put oh, the calculated co the yeah, cost. Yeah, yes. yeah. So here's the moment you've all been waiting for. So let's talk about money. The total amount. This is my drum roll. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, can see why you're not a drummer. <laughs> the total amount that we paid in today's episode was $439.57, which seems like a lot. It does. But here is the total sold amount. Are you guys ready for this? $2,016.48. Now, that's not profit. No, no, no. And and, and you also have to put in our update. Yes, yeah, so our here. update. Which yeah. Our update total was $98.96. Yeah. So that brings the total to $2,100. And fifteen dollars and forty-four cents. Yeah. So, so then, now you what, subtract what we paid. What we paid. So that brings the total to one thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars and eighty-seven cents. And then we have to factor in fifteen percent for fees, taxes, shipping, supplies, yeah, all yeah, this other yeah, stuff. Yeah. Fifteen percent is just what we do in every episode. Yeah. So that brings the grand total, the grand profit, money in our pocket to buy expensive games that we want to $1,424.49, just right in our pockets. Yep. What? It, it, it just speaks to why game hunting can still happen in 2021. Yeah, you're not gonna walk into grad sales and thrift stores and find boxes of NES and SNES and Genesis games on the cheap. No. But if you go about it like we're going about it, Yes, it takes per persistence, it takes sweat equity, it takes time, but you can literally build a retro game collection for free. Yes. I guess if you subtract out time and sweat equity, but like our collection, we always are like, oh, we want this game. Okay, well, let's go out and find some stuff, sell some stuff, and let's get this game. You know, uh, a perfect is example is we, we weren't hesitant to buy Contra Hardcore for 100 bucks. Why? Because we got Because of things like this. And it just takes that consistent hunt. How do you find the time? You, you would be surprised how much time you have that you don't realize you have. You know, like for me, most of the finds in this video were over my lunch break. I get an hour. I take 40 minutes and I go hit a couple thrift stores in my area and I get back to work and nobody knows none the wiser. Yeah, they just think you went to lunch. But I find a rock band red drum set that turns into something crazy. Dude, I remember you called me that day and oh, you said, yeah. dude, I guess what I just found. <laughs> and it hadn't even sold yet, but I'm like, you're like, this is. I, I think I text our buddy Newland too because I was like, uh, dude, this is insane. And it, it, it really. You know, the narrative kind of anymore for retro collecting, I feel like, which is why we do some of our other videos of how to find, you know, cheap games on whatever console or collecting for certain consoles and whatever here. But, like, it doesn't have to empty your bank account. No. It really, really doesn't. And uh, anyone can do this, guys. Yeah. We're just trying to show like, you, you can do this. <laughs> like, we, we have to be. IQ and whatever else you can put into the equation, the most average guys there are. The most average person in our entire armed forces. Oh, I think we are average below, height, <laughs> average weight, below, average. Probably below average, and we're able to do things like this to fund our retro gaming hobby and habit, if you will, and our beer, beer. beer habit. But nonetheless, it can be done, and we really, really hope in watching these videos a, that you enjoy them, and B, that you can find some useful tips yes. to help you in your retro game hunting endeavors or whatever else you care to do. Because honestly, if I had the time, 
I think I could do this for a full time job. Oh, absolutely. This is insane. For sure. And this, guys, we're just showing you a little behind the scenes. We're just showing you like the big pickups, the big dingers. There's a bunch of stuff that you yeah. pick up and flip that you don't even film. There's stuff that is filmed that we don't even put in videos yeah. because like the profit's not there. But a two dollar DVD for eleven ninety nine, do that repeatedly. We don't show that. Yeah, that's still a ton of profit. That, that's a great point. You know? There's there's tons of other like we have a power seller eBay store as a channel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I would say probably 50, 60 percent of that doesn't ever make it into these videos. So uh, it's a great point to bring up as we're wrapping things up. But cool. anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this fifth Got G hunting episode. And you can apply some of the things maybe you learned in this episode to your retro game hunting endeavors. And uh, we're going to finish watching the old Super Bowl and enjoying this brew. Yes. So we'll see you next time right here on Gaming Off the Grid. Yep. Crap. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yep. We're going to talk about a lot of things in that episode, but it was just crazy to find this stuff and. Ah. <laughs> okay.